Hello and welcome back to Open, everyone. It is now time for this week's Open Artist Spotlight. The Open Artist Spotlight is made possible in part with public funds from the Bronx Council on the Arts through the New York State Council on the Arts Decentralization Program. Our Open Artist Spotlight features the words of a writer, performer, and educator identifying himself as Afro Boricua. His powerful poetry expresses his experiences with wisdom of insight. Please welcome here performing for us today, Noel Quinones. Perdóname. Is this enough? to barter for that American tongue? I heard it can carve the memory out of anything until your throat calls the knife father. I heard you like the way it speaks English. I tried to steal it once, but my family got there first, nanny. When are you gonna cut your hair? You know we left the Bronx for our reason. And now you wanna look like them? What did we tell you about stealing? Next thing you know, we'll have, you'll have corn rolls, and if you ever get corn rolls, I'll never speak your name in this house again. Of course I know Puerto Ricans come from Africa. Of course. That's why we frame the history of our last name from Spain. It has our family crest. Isn't it beautiful and bleached and half a bloodbath's amnesia? Remember how important it is to know all of your history? Heard you calling yourself Afro-Latino now. How's that working out for you? I mean, I'm just confused. I just don't know where all this black stuff came from. It's so sudden. You didn't grow up like that, right? I mean, I'm just baffled. Can you even prove it? Prove it? Prove it? You've been baffled by your own Spanglish? How it tries to lick the moon clean of its grays? Knows how hard it is to be a smudge shade instead of a real color? Real, 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 yo. You can't really be black if you speak Spanish, man. But let me tell you something, you can say the N-word as long as you say it with a Spanish accent. Oh my God. I love it when you speak Spanish to me. Please speak Spanish to me. Please speak Spanish to me. Please speak Spanish. Well, I'm not fluent. I'm still learning. There's just a sentence or a word. How do you say love? Isn't it a more, more, more? Tell me more. My friends call you my Latin lover. That's okay with you, right? It's just a joke that replaced your name. You're just a phase. My brother said he saw you eating tacos on the Discovery Channel. It's like they own you now, but he's not racist every day since we've been together. I ask myself, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Where did you come from? You should go back to where you came from. Where are you going to take me now? Is it going to be somewhere ethnic? Oh, the New Eurekan Poets Cafe? Are all your friends going to be there? Whoa. It's like no one speaks Spanish here. Didn't your people build this place? What? No, no, no. What'd you say? Are you trying to tell me something? Are you trying to communicate with me? The first word of your poem was in Spanish. So I tuned you out. That was it, the <laughs> I got caught up. I'm sorry, I got caught up watching him on the monitor. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. That was awesome. I no, I love the messaging and I love the fact that you do performance style poetry. Right. Yes, yes. So is that from a real life experience? Uh, so it's every response that I've gotten after I started identifying as Afro-Latino. Okay, Afro so that's a really good that starting point because mm -hmm. I want to know mm -hmm. when you decided to identify yourself as an Afro-Latino and why do you stand so strong in identifying yourself as an Afro-Latino? Right, so I started identifying my, uh, this was about two years ago uh, that I started identifying as Afro-Latino and I, uh, I wanted something that, I, that made me feel like it encompassed where I felt I was from and how I wanted to identify. And so growing up in the Bronx, uh, in a neighborhood that was not just Puerto Rican, uh, but was also black and was also uh, African American, uh, I wanted to f feel that I identified with where I grew up and that kind of history. And once I started researching and finding out the history and talking to different people, it felt wrong to not identify as Afro-Latino and as Afro-Boricua. So what, you know, I want you to share with our viewers, what, what did you find digging into the roots of uh, your research? 
I found well, that the research uh, of your roots. The research of our roots. <laughs> the research of your roots. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I found that there is overwhelmingly uh, truth in in our uh, lineage as Puerto Ricans. That when you're you know you talk about Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is not just uh, you know in this grand scheme of Latinos, it's this idea that we are descended from Spain, mm -hmm. descended from the Taino natives of the island, as well as uh, Africans. And so all those experiences come through in Puerto Rican culture growing up, and we can see them once we know where they came from, but no one wants to talk about it. Uh, no one wants to pinpoint and say, these are the, the connections that are there. And so I started finding all these truths that were there, but were not being presented uh, to us. I love that you're doing it in art form, mm -hmm. and I love that you're actually, you've mm -hmm. taken the initiative to be an educator uh, about it and for it. And I've always said, and I'll say it again, we are the original rainbow people, mm -hmm. right? Because right. the rest of the world's gonna end up looking like <laughs> us eventually. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. nice that you stand <laughs> strong. And I feel you, you know, um, the hair, Afro, Afro, <laughs> Afro Latina, <Yeah>. baby. <laughs> No, yes. your, your, your words are wonderful and, and, and so profound and for somebody you're, you know, so young yeah. as you. And, and um, thank you for being here on our set and sharing it with our viewers. And hopefully you've inspired some other uh, Afro-Latinos to identify yeah. themselves as such. Right. Um, and you are going to recite one more for us, right? Yes. All right. So yeah. I just want everybody to know that um, you can actually listen to more. Uh, you could see more of his. He's got a lot of stuff on his website, which I really enjoyed. And it's El Nino Quiñones. It's really Really supposed to be El Niño Quiñones, but I don't think they had Enes. Right? They don't let you put it. They don't, they don't I don't think so. It. So it's El Nino <laughs> Quiñones .com. All right. That is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. Don't forget, if you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Read Cablecast tonight and 24 hours a day at BronxNet.tv. Once again, I'm Rina Valentin, and from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide. Paz, prosperity, y amor. Adios. I leave you with Noel Quiñones. Woo! Eight confessions of my tongue. One. I am not fluent. And when you realize I'm not fluent, there is always a countdown. You expected the waterfall, the spit that crossed the ocean. The syllable suffocating dance, and it is a dance. This moving, weaving, shifting, turning your back on what you can never keep up with. I contain so much sad brown mouth that I can't even pronounce Quiñones without a stranger examining the air it took to learn it too. Everything here is a thievious memory, a hungry thing gobbling itself into existence. I listen to Daddy Yankee, Evie Queen, Pego Calderon, make a bastion for reggaeton in my throat, but can't tell you what the song means. I yell Mark Anthony lyrics and think volume equates to knowledge. I tell myself it's not lying if I feel something, but I'm always the last one to yell wepa, forever late to my own identity. Three, my tongue is a countryless serpent. They whisper of my fraud on the block and in the classroom. But all I have are these two false skins stitched into a name. I've worn so many of my family members' stories that I confuse my childhood for theirs for. I can't remember the last time I didn't use Google Translate to prove myself to a poem. Five, this means I am not as fluent as my poems. They are an imagined Latinidad where I taste the shore and it accepts me where my grandmother wasn't spit on every day for not knowing English, and that didn't translate to her never teaching us, and you can see it in my father's amnesia. When I ask him about our indigenous Taino language and he laughs 6,000 dead bodies onto the dinner table six, I practice a self-torture in front of the mirror every morning, mimic whatever words I stole to make myself a more Latin thing. Cambiara, servilleta, compañero, my skin, always mistaken for home. My last name, an invitation to strangers who say your parents should have taught you. But my parents say it's my fault. And I remember the first time I asked for help. Went to use por y para in a sentence and they said you just feel it. You're just supposed to feel it. Seven, I don't. Eight, my tongue is a gringo's last hope. 
a stutter beneath a foreign accent mark, a transcontinental thing stuck in its own ocean, and so I flood Quinones onto my mother's lap. Que vergüenza, she says. Now you don't belong anywhere. <laughs>